Hey everybody, Michael Mowbray here. Just wanted to show you how I handle the post-production on a lot of these Mojector images. Um, show you how they uh, come out of the camera, at least the way I shoot them. And then show you some of the things I do when I process. And uh, we'll get into a little bit of the retouch too. But uh, what I'm showing here is straight out of the camera. This is straight out of my Sony uh, A7R III. Um, I lit her with uh, LEDs. Uh, the Golden Eagle L2000 and L3000 LEDs in, uh, in soft boxes, and uh, those are just dead on for daylight balance. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and take a look at the color balance and the white balance. Color balance is pretty dang good here. But um, one of the things I noticed when um, I bring things into Capture One, and by the way, uh, this is all being done in Capture One, except for a little bit of the end retouch we're going to do in Photoshop. So um, if you don't know Capture One, man, it is far superior to Lightroom in my opinion, especially when working with Sony files. And that's what got me to com to uh, convert over to Capture One um, from Lightroom when I switched to Sony because I just found uh, the files look so much better. And it has I have more control over uh, some of the finite controls too in Capture One. So I'm using Capture One version 12. Um, Capture one version 20 just came out haven't even looked at it yet because you know what we're still in the middle of heavy production here and i don't like to adopt new software when we're still dealing with um a lot of work i, I do it more in the off season so anyway let's go to the white balance on this and um you can see it came in at 5,477 degrees, which I find interesting because on my Sony, I dialed into 5,600, but it still comes in at 5,477. So I usually just go in and type 5,600. Um, it's at one, minus one uh, tint, a little bit more toward, a little, taking a little bit of the magenta out. And I'm okay with that because uh, she's got fairly pale, fairly, um, fairly pink skin. So I think we are going to leave that where it is. So I'm actually going to... Um, pop over from this to what we call a variant because um, I've already worked on a variant of this. So this is the original coming into Capture One. Then now I'm going to actually go over to a copy of it that I did some work on. So I'll go back and copy. Okay, you can see a couple things I did right off the bat is I cropped in a little tighter. Uh, when I'm doing stuff like this as more creative work, um, I crop the raw because I want to work with um, how I envision this shot right now. I mean, how do I envision this this ending up? I want to get as close as I can to the final shot when I'm working with the raw. And that's one of the things we're going to be going through today is rather than just taking that, uh, that raw file, doing the color balance and whatnot, and then rendering a JPEG and then retouching um, in Photoshop, now I'm going to take this 95% of the way here in Capture One. That's the other thing I love about Capture One. So um, I can work with layers in Capture One, which is amazing. So we're just going to uh, come up here to the left, and I'm going to turn off some of these extra layers, and I'm going to talk through what I, what I do here. So all I've done here is I've cropped and I've straightened it. It was slightly crooked, um, so I straightened it, and now I've got a good base image. Um, first thing first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the skin. So I'm going to come in, and I've already done that, but I'm just going to redo it for you guys. I come down here to the color editor. I'm in the color uh, color mode. I come down to color editor. I can select basic, advanced, skin tone. I'm going to go to skin tone, and I'm going to click on good mid-level skin tone. Okay. So I went back to the original image because I had already done some adjustments here. I went back and took me back to the original image. And you can see over here on the color wheel, it's leaning more red, more pink. And that's basically her skin. It's December in Wisconsin, and we tend to be fairly pink folk up here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is, again, I take that sample of a good mid-tone in there, and I'm going to just take this middle of this color wheel, and I'm going to turn it a little bit warmer. And you can see her color, the her skin tone shift to warmer tones. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, uniformity down here under hue, and it usually starts off at zero, and it saved my last setting, so I'm actually going to dial that up to about 55. And what that does is it takes all these various hues in the skin tone, 
and evens them out a little bit more. So we're seeing less variation in the skin color and we're getting more uniformity. Um, another thing you can do is you can pop the saturation, which I did just a little bit. So you have all these different tools down here. Um, you have uh, just overall blanket amounts of hue, saturation, and lightness, or you can control how uniform the hue, saturation, and lightness is on that skin. And I take it to where I feel is a good, healthy, natural, good look for this particular image. So I do that on the background layer. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with um, the actual image I'm projecting onto the wall. As you can see, I didn't pull down a white sweep on this. I'm just projecting this onto a white wall. I've got some white, um, basically like shower board on the floor to kind of give me um, a nice white uh, high key look that's also reflective. That's a very nice key for this as well. If you want to get that reflective look on your floor, you pick up the shower board at Home Depot or Lowers or whatever. It's like 12 bucks, 15 bucks, I think, for like a three and a half by eight foot sheet, something like that. And uh, they're paying the butt to store because uh, they take up a fair amount of space, but you lay them down on the floor and uh, they're fairly durable and they give you a nice look. Um, you can also see down here where I've got them joined together. Easy retouch in Photoshop later on, so I don't even bother uh, messing with that right now. But coming back around to, I'm um, projecting this image back on the wall, and as you can see, it's coming in, and it's not black and white. It's not contrasty enough, at least not for where I want to be. Does this look fine the way it is? Yeah, it probably does. I want it to be even more contrasty. So this is one of the magical things that you can do in Capture One. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a layer up here in the left. I can click on and add a layer. Okay. And then now I can hit B for brush. It's going to pull up a brush tool for me. And then over here I can control the size, the hardness of the brush, the opacity, the flow. So I'm actually going to take the hardness up fairly high, up into the 70s. And then I'm going to use a bigger brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm creating a layer mask. And I'm just trying to paint on the background. And I can use my bracket keys just like I do in Photoshop to come in and change the size of the brush. And right now on the brush, I have it set to auto mask. So it's going to try to detect, oops, try to detect edges here. Harder to do this and talk at the same time. And as I go along, it'll pause every once in a while and it'll, it'll adjust the auto mask. So I'm just trying to paint the background itself. And I'm not even worried about getting this on the floor. I want to make this actual wall more contrasty. So I'm coming in, getting that done. I'm going to change my brush down and make it smaller. And come in and get this area underneath here. And I'm actually a little bit more concerned about the blacks than I am with the whites in there. And bring this in relatively tight. And we'll call that good. Okay. Now, I can make my adjustments and see where they fall. Or I always like to hit E for erase. It switches the brush over to an eraser. And then I just come in and see where any, any place where that red maybe got in on the skin. And actually, did a pretty good job. And I was just, I was just doing a quick, uh, quick painted mask here. It's looking pretty good overall. Make sure it's not on the tip of the hair. Okay, I got that. So now I've basically created a mask on just the image I'm projecting onto the background. I'm going to go over to the exposure dialog, and I can do a couple different things here. I can pop the contrast, which I might do. As you can see. With those stripes in the background really landing more as mid-tones, I really probably need less of a contrast pop and more of a curve pop. And I'm just going to come in and kind of like the middle range of some of these stripes. As, you, as I hover over them, look down here. You can look down to the curve dialog, and you can kind of see where that's falling. So I'm just going to grab where that point is, and I'm just going to start to drag it down. And now you can see where I'm pulling those stripes and getting them blacker and blacker. Okay? Liking that. Now I can see a little bit more where maybe my mask wasn't the cleanest. I can come back and I can fix that. 
So I'm still working with this new layer. I can hit B for brush. Now I want to come in and I want to adjust my hardness down a little bit. I just want just a little softer brush. I'm going to come in a little smaller. And I'm actually going to zoom in a little tighter. And one of the areas I'm concerned about here is I can see almost like a ghosting here. So I'm just going to come in and clean that up a little bit. Same kind of thing along the edge of the mini dress here. A little bit over here by the hand. Just wanting to be careful that I'm not affecting the skin. I got just a little bit here coming onto the skin or turning it black. Same kind of thing a little bit on this tattoo area here. So I'm just going to come in and make those adjustments. And how is this different from doing in Photoshop? Similar kind of work if you're going to mask in Photoshop, but here I'm dealing with the raw. I'm not making these big adjustments to a JPEG or even to a TIFF. I feel like it's a lot better to do it to a raw file. And then pull that into Photoshop and finish it off how I want to finish it off. And just getting a little tweaky in here. And I'm not going to do this perfectly. I just want you guys to kind of see how this is done. And how I'm getting the look that I'm getting with these. And even with these, bringing them into the hat just a little bit is fine. Because it's black tone anyway. That's fine. Oops. There we go. Okay. Pretty much got it where I want it to be. All right. So the next thing I look at, is there anything else that I want to adjust? Um, I feel like the socks could have a little bit more pop. Um, I feel like I want to do a little dodge and burn on her skin and on her face. I can do that here in Capture One. So I'm actually going to go in and we're going to do socks. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to my brush tool. And come down here and I'm just going to paint a mask on the socks. And I'm going to do something very similar to what we just did for the background. Why didn't I include the socks with the background? Eh, I feel like it's going to be a little different, little different shift that I would do was going to do with the background. And then all I need to do is I can go to contrast and see if that gets the job done because it's quick and easy. And look at that. Boom. Done. Did contrast. Awesome. It's got a little bit more pop on the socks. Now I mentioned I want to go in and dodge and burn the skin just a little bit. I want to do that on the raw here because then it's going to give me a cleaner file to take into Photoshop. I'm going to go in and create a new, um, a, a new layer. I want a little softer brush. So I'll take this down to like, you know, 20-ish. Come in a little tighter. And it's not letting me go. And scroll down. On, come on. Yeah. Stupid thing. There we go. It was being silly. All right, I got my brush. I'll make it a little smaller. And all I'm doing is I'm coming into kind of the mask of the face here. And I think I want to hit a little highlight coming down the arm here, a little highlight coming down the arm here. I can see some other uh, masking issues I had. I can go back and fix those if I want. And all I'm going to do, do, do there is mask that, and that's going to hit a little exposure move. Not much. You know, I'm moving like six... Uh, not even a stop, a sixteenth of a stop. Sixteen percent of a stop. There we go. Just enough to give a little bit of pop. You can turn it on and turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Boom. No different than dodging and burning in uh, Photoshop, but again, going to give me a little cleaner file. Now, if I wanted to go in and, uh, and adjust some of these other layers, um, you can name them as you go along. I just know that this one was the one where I was working on the background. So I'm going to go take a little, some of that off the hair. I can see where I've got to tighten it up a little bit here over by the skin. I want to work with a little darker or a little harder brush. Boom, coming in. Just bring this in tighter. There we go. Bring that in over top there. It's one of those things too. You could also come in with a 
little softer edged brush at a lower opacity but coming in and getting that pretty good overall a little smaller brush here so again no different than working in Photoshop except this is just going to give you a cleaner file and keep you in your initial program which is uh, your processing program capture one uh, a little bit longer and that's okay so I like it I can just hit a control D and I can process this out I create a recipe whether I want a JPEG or I want a TIFF um, and then I take that into Photoshop to finish it off and that's that's basically how I treat all of these these Mojector shots especially the ones that are more graphic if I'm not getting the level of detail on the background or level of uh, darkness and contrast on the background I just do it in the raw process um, it took me 15 minutes to do this video the actual work in doing this in capture one is about three minutes and to me that's great you know if I can keep any retouch or prep under three minutes for a creative file great if I was doing a ton of different images um, would I want to do this level of work on every single file no but that's not the point of doing something like the Mojector Moje projected images those are for unique images those are for something special that you maybe mix into a session this is not I want to do 30 of these does that make sense <laughs> because I think part of um, part of the reason to do this Mojector thing is to give it something a different look and you're doing it in camera and a lot of people are going to say well I can do this in post I can shoot this on green screen or I can shoot this on a white sweep and I can drop in these stripes in post absolutely you definitely could it's going to be a different look so it depends on which look you like best I could do that myself there might be times I would do that myself but other part of this too is part of the experience for the person you're photographing because they can't visualize like you can as a photographer and a creative person they can't visualize where you're taking this image and you do one like this and all they can see is that wall back there you take one shot like this and you want to get that model or that customer to really buy into what you're doing flip your camera around and show them the coolness that you just created in camera it'll freak them out they'll love you forever and they'll trust you the rest of the shoot so um, I do that quite often with my senior clients you know I nail a really cool interesting shot that looks nothing like what the ambient light looks like because I'm creating light I'm creating different look and different contrast controlling the ambient light and adding flash whatever and I'll show the mom and I'll show the senior and then they do not question anything else I do the rest of the time because they know I got this handled I'm working magic with what I'm doing and they're gonna really enjoy the experience and that's what this part of this is all about is creating a little different experience and a little different look at the same time so hopefully that helps give you an idea of what I do in post with these um, I'm not going to take this one into Photoshop right now I'll just tell you what I would do in Photoshop I would clean up the line I would clean up some of these marks on the floor I mean that's basic retouching you don't need to see me do that um, right over here I don't know if you can see this there's a gap and that's where the end of the stripe ends versus here I would probably clone that over just to make a connection there because I don't like that gap right there um, I would fix a little bit of this up here with um, a content aware fill where we shot a little bit off the background little things like that that's Photoshop that's what I'm gonna do in Photoshop is like cleaning up those little things the major stuff I'm still doing in capture one so this has been Mowbray go out and enjoy your Mojector and hopefully this video helped you uh, figure out what to do after you've captured the image